In our morning rounds, a young woman with a devastating brain disorder inherited over generations stops it from reaching her children. The breakthrough is featured in the new issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association. And as Dr. Holly Phillips reports, researchers are calling her case the first of its kind. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. 30-year-old Amanda Kalinske was faced with an unenviable decision. Risk passing on a fatal brain disease to her children or give up on her dream of having children. But as you'll see, modern medicine offered a third option that would change everything. I'll help you. There you go. Unlike most people one? her age, Amanda Kalinsky knows in all likelihood how and when she'll die. What the future holds for me is probably not very pretty um, as far as the ending goes. When Amanda's around 50 years old, doctors believe she'll be stricken with a neurologic disorder called gerstmann straussler schenker syndrome. My father had it as well as my grandfather uh, and my uncle. In fact, it's been in her family for five generations. Amanda's father, a doctor, died from it in 2010 after a six-year battle. It started with some balance issues, uh, and then he started having trouble talking, um, and then he started having trouble swallowing and eating, um, and then he became bedridden. As you can imagine, it was, it was awful. Amanda decided to get tested to see if she would face the same fate. I was talking to my physician and my genetic counselor, and I remember hearing him saying, uh, Amanda, I'm sorry. Um, and then I don't remember anything after that. I just remember um, screaming, and then that's it. She told her then boyfriend of five years she'd understand if he wanted out. I had seen what kind of uh, death and what kind of illness I would go through. And uh, it's awful. I said, I completely understand. If you want to go, if you just want to go away. It was not something that was even an option for me. We were in this together. I loved her, I love her. Um, it was uh, something that we were going to figure out together. He proposed the very next day. They knew they wanted kids, but Amanda had a 50% chance of passing on the same gene mutation that's plagued her family for so many years. Svetlana Rachitsky is laboratory director at the Reproductive Genetics Institute in Chicago. Unfortunately, we can't cure patient, but we can prevent passing these genes to next generation. She used pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, to screen Amanda's embryos for the bad genes. PGD was to us the only option. Um, taking that 50-50 chance uh, was never something that we considered. Using IVF, doctors were able to implant only healthy embryos. Amanda gave birth to twins Ava and Cole in 2011 and had a son Tatum last year. What we have been through is, is an option that's out there that could completely eradicate diseases like this. PGD has been around for years, but it's still a developing science. Researchers say this is the first time it's been used to screen for this type of condition. There are people who question whether someone who knows they might have a premature death is in a good position to have children. You know, it doesn't matter how I, how I die. It doesn't matter how I look tomorrow. It's the now. It's what they learn now and what I teach them now uh, that's going to affect them in the future. Experts say people with neurologic disorders similar to Amanda's are also candidates for PGD, and it's already being used for certain forms of hereditary cancer and other conditions. But as the science advances, ethical questions about when and where to draw the line when it comes to picking and choosing only the healthiest embryos. Critics say it can become a slippery slope. Doctor, it is fascinating because I think many people would support the idea of trying to prevent a terrible genetic disease, and yet this technology also allows people to make designer babies. 
gender selection, perhaps choose hair color, eye color. What about that slippery yeah. slope? You know, you're right, Nora. The, the technology to truly design your baby, frankly, is there right now. Uh, and that's where the questions arise. What we're going to do as a society about this and where we're going to draw the line. And there right are no, now, regu no there, regulations in America about this. Not yet. But I have to say that's not being done right now. People aren't really going in and saying, I want blue eyes or green eyes. Uh, and, you know, geneticists aren't going down those, those lines. But they could one day. All right, Dr. Holly Phillips, good to see you. Thank you.